So a few months ago, you might have heard about AlphaFold, which is a protein structure folding algorithm that is reaching the level of experimental accuracy. So the algorithm AlphaFold is a big thing in the life sciences because it allows you to go from a simple sequence of the protein and then being able to predict the protein structure. And as the sequence dictate the protein structure and the protein structure dictates the function of the protein, this will allow scientists to better understand diseases and in doing so help them to develop cure and in industry it could also be used to create useful proteins that are of industrial application and so aside from AlphaFold Meta AI has released this new algorithm called ESM fold so as you can see in this article published in nature on November 1st the article headline says AlphaFold's new rival Meta AI predicts the shape of 600 million proteins so this is a big thing because if you go to the protein data bank from the RCSB, you can see that in all of its history, it has deposited about 197,000 structures. And this is spanning several decades of the accumulation of experimental structure from X-ray crystallography. And let's have a look at the article from Meta AI. So in this ESM Meta Genomic Atlas, it is the first view of the dark matter of the protein universe. And so you can see here that the entire protein universe has been predicted in terms of its protein structure. And you can see that each dot here represents a single protein structure. And so all of these encompasses millions of protein structures, theoretically predicted. And as we have already recalled from AlphaFold, the prediction accuracy is rivaling the experimental level. And ESM fold is also rivaling the alpha fold. And we could also see here that the experimental structure, as already mentioned, is a little under 200,000 structures determined experimentally. But ESM fold here has predicted the structure for 600 million protein structures. And so that is like hundreds of times larger than the existing number from the protein data bank. And so this greatly accelerates protein research and in doing so, it allows scientists to take a big leap forward thanks to AI. And so a little over a week, I've seen this app shared by Osan Seviero in this ESM fold application that he had developed. And in a nutshell, the app here accepts the protein sequence. And if you click on the predict structure, you're going to get this predicted structure. And it's interactive and you can zoom in and zoom out. And so in this video, I will attempt to build a similar app using Streamlit in Python. And so let's have a look at the app. So you could go to the app demo by going to esmfold.streamlit.app. And so the app here has the name of the app shown on the left-hand panel here. And then the description of the app is displayed here. And then you have the input sequence. You could also copy paste another sequence here as well. And click on predict. And then in a short moment, you're going to get the predicted structure. So it's using the same sequence as the one from this app. So kudos to Osan for the inspiration and ideas for the app that I'm building today. And here you can see that we've allowed the protein structure to rotate and you can zoom in as well. And in addition to the protein structure, we're also calculating the PLDDT value. And this value will give us the relative confidence of the prediction. So the higher the value, the better. So it has a value of 0 0.88, which indicate that we have high confidence in the prediction of this protein structure. And aside from being able to visualize the protein structure here, in this app, you could also download the predicted structure as a PDB file. You click here and you'll get the PDB structure. Let's have a look. And this is the contents of the PDB file with the X, Y, Z coordinate of the protein structure. And so you could use any other protein visualizer to take a look at the protein structure, such as PyMo. All right, and so let's now take a look at the code on how we could actually build this Streamlit application. So you could head over to Data Professor, GitHub, and go to the ESM fold folder. 
So as always, I've quickly prototyped this particular GitHub repo using the GitHub template called Streamlit App Starter Kit. And if you would like to find out how you could do this on your own as well, I'll provide you the link to the blog and also the repo. Let's take a look. So if you click here, you go directly to the app that I've just shown you just a moment ago. Let's head over back and let's take a look at the requirements.txt. So these are the four libraries that we're going to use. So we're going to use Streamlit, we're going to use STMO, Py3DMO. So two of these are the molecular visualizer libraries. And so here, we're going to use the biotite library to calculate the PLDDT value. Let's have a look at the other files. Let's see if we have used any packages here. So no other packages were used. And let's have a look at the streamletapp.py file. So the first two lines are the credits. So big kudos to Osan for the ideas and inspiration for building this app. And the first few lines here, we're going to import the necessary Python libraries. So we have Streamlit as ST. We're importing the showmo function from the STMO. We're going to import the Py3DMO. We're going to import the request library. We're going to import the biotype.structure.io as BSIO. And then here on line number 11, we're going to create the title. So let me show you side by side the app here. So line 11 will be displayed here, the ESM fold title. And in line number 12, we will write the paragraph description of the app shown here. And we're using Markdown to write the description, right? So we're linking to the research article and also the news article published in the Nature, which I've shown you just a moment ago. And if you would like to modify the layout to be wide, you could also feel free to uncomment this. But in this case, we're going to comment it out. Okay, so lines 15 until 23, I'm going to create a custom function called render mo. And here I'm going to configure the various parameters and configurations of the molecular visualization of the protein structure. So essentially here, we're going to create a variable called PDB view, and we're going to use py3dmo.view to assign that. And then we're going to add the model, which is the PDB structure shown here. We're going to set the style of the structure to be cartoon, as you can see. And then the color here will be the rainbow color spectrum. And then we're gonna set the background to be white color. We're gonna allow it to zoom into the structure because if you don't use zoom too, it won't zoom into the structure. And here we're going to set the relative size of the protein structure, as well as using the height and width here. And then we're defining on line number 26. Let me just refresh this so that it doesn't spin while I'm talking. Line number 26, we're going to create a variable called default sequence. And then we're going to define the sequence as a string. 27, we're going to create the sidebar here and the sidebar, the text area. So the text box here is created using the text area command. And then we're going to use as input argument, the input sequence shown here. And then the actual sequence as the example will be displayed from the default sequence variable. And then we're going to set the height to be 275 so that it rough relatively will fit the entire sequence height. And then from line number 30 until line 58, we're going to create a function called update. And then we're going to use the update function that we have just created as the input argument to the on click parameter. When we click on the predict button, it's going to call the update function. And by default, when you load up the page on line number 63 and 64, by default, you're going to see this warning or status telling you to enter the protein sequence data. And after you have entered the sequence data, it will resort to the other one. If not predict will be false and it will resort to the top part here, as shown here, using the contents inside the update function. All right, and so let's have a look at the contents of the update function. So the first few lines here was actually taken from the code from Osan. And so essentially it allows you to call the ESM fold API and providing the sequence as the input. And then you're going to get it as the PDB string, the predicted structure as a PDB string. 
And then finally here, we're going to write the PDB string into a file called predicted.pdb. And then we're going to load in the structure into the BSIO in order to calculate the PLDTT. Here, the PLDTT value will be saved in the B factor column. So we're going to use the B factor function here to calculate the mean, which will take the B factor value, which is actually the PLDTT, and calculate the mean value. And then we're going to round it to four decimal points and then save it to the B value variable. And then on lines number 45 and 46, we're going to display the protein structure as you see here, the protein structure. So we're going to use st.subheader to display the text heading here, visualization of predicted protein structure. And then we're going to use the render mode function that we have just created, custom made. And then as input string here, we're going to use PDB string, which is the PDB contents. And the PDB contents is essentially the X, Y, Z coordinate of the protein structure, which you can see here in three dimension. All right. And then after here, after the protein structure, you're going to see the st.subheader command used to create this heading. And then we're going to use st.write to write the description of what PLTTT is. And then here, finally, at the bottom, we're going to allow the user to download the PDB file from the PDB string or the predicted.pdb file as a downloadable file. So you click here and you're going to see that it downloads the file. And finally, as mentioned already on line number 60, if you click on the predict button, like here, it's going to call the update function that we have defined earlier on here, and then it will display the results or content of the update function. And then you're going to get the predicted structure from the API, and then you're going to also see the PLDTT value being calculated. And finally, you could download the PDB file. And so you could also add more awesome functions or parameters that you would like. You could also play around with the settings of the STMO to change the color or to change it from cartoon to a protein stick configuration. And so let me know in the comments down below what type of custom function that you think you would like to build using the ESM fold. And so if you're finding value in the video, please smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and also turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.